Hi guys, welcome to module 11, which is on driving in-store traffic and sales with Facebook. The objective of this module is to help drive footfall in sales to a physical location or a local business. The agenda for this session would be to first help you understand how Facebook can help you increase footfall in local sales, how you can grow visibility and sales of your physical store. Then before you get started with creating your ad campaign, a quick checklist of all the elements you need to have in place. Next, we look at which campaign objectives would you choose to set up your local marketing campaigns? Which core audiences would work best for you? Also, how you can utilize custom and lookalike audience targeting to reach your audience effectively? Which placements and formats you should choose for maximum impact? How you would set the budget schedule and advanced options for the same? The best creatives to go with for maximum impact. And last, how you would measure the effectiveness of your campaigns and how you would optimize your results to ensure you keep getting better and better ROI over time. So let's first get started with how do you grow the visibility and sales of your local store? How do you increase footfall? How do you drive in-store sales? Let's first understand which businesses need footfall in the first place. So these are generally stores or shops with a physical storefront, brick and mortar stores. These could be restaurants, salons, spas, barbers, retail outlets, basically any business where customers need to walk through the door to buy. For all of these businesses, this module will take you through how you can create effective Facebook ad campaigns to drive store walk-ins and sales. So what are local businesses most concerned about? What are their biggest concerns? The first one is more often than not, these offline stores have a tight budget to work with for their marketing. And they want to be most effective in capturing nearby people, people who are around them in that moment. In order to address these challenges, or these concerns, you need to effectively target those around your business first and then expand your targeting later. You would use what we call hyper local targeting, targeting people who are around you in that moment. Facebook can help you do both of these and increase footfall. So Facebook ads can help you drive footfall to your brick and mortar locations. They can help you increase awareness of your offline or physical store. They can also help you reach customers right through the marketing funnel that we discussed in module one. So Facebook ads would help you at the awareness stage, at the interest stage, the consideration stage, the purchase stage, and even at the brand loyalty stage. At every stage of the marketing funnel, you can use Facebook ads effectively to reach out to your target audience, customers, and prospects. So before we get started, with creating a Facebook ad campaign for a local business. Let's take a look at a list of elements that need to be in place before we start. The first one, you should have a Facebook page vanity URL. You should have completed your page information section. You should have a call to action button on your page as well as on any ads that you create going forward. You should be clear about what creative assets you have available for use. Do you have photos? Do you have videos? Which of these can be used in ads that you're going to run? You should have your target audience clearly defined. So you've done this in earlier modules, you've defined your target audience for your business. You also segmented them. 
and you would list on any promotions you have to offer so what promotions would you offer to people who walk in so you could probably give a straight discount let's say a 10 15 20% off you could have a special gift for the early bird customers so you'll have to decide on what promotions what offers make sense for your business which you'll be able to run along with your store visits or local business ads once you have that in place then you will log on to facebook and then if you are an existing advertiser on the left you'll see ads manager or adwords manager which you can then click on to take you to the ads manager interface if you are creating an ad for the first time then you'll see a create ad or create adword sometimes you might see it at the bottom left corner of your facebook as soon as you log in you'll have a create ad or a create page at the bottom so you can then click on create ad once you do that it will take you to the ad creation interface for those of you who are doing it for the first time for those of you who've done it before it will take you to the ads manager from where you'll then have to click on that create advert button that you see here on the top right once you click on that it will take you to the ads manager interface from where you can select your campaign objective so it will ask you what your marketing objective is and this is where you will choose what is most relevant to your business at that point right so going forward in this module we will look at every stage starting from the campaign level what objectives would you choose what are the best suited objectives for local businesses we'll then move on to the ad set level we look at what audiences we can target what placements we can use how do we budget what kind of scheduling can be done what kind of ad formats would best suit local businesses at the ad level we'll then also look at measurement and optimization so to get started let's go to the first stage of creating your facebook ad campaign which is the campaign level where you will choose your objective for the campaign so when it comes to local businesses you could choose any one of these three highlighted options you could choose brand awareness if you want to drive awareness about your local brand you could choose engagement if you want to engage with your audience to drive consideration and top of mind recall and you could use store visits if you want them to walk into your store and make a purchase now if you're starting with a small budget which as we discussed earlier is a common concern a lot of offline businesses face is they have fairly tight budgets to work on in which case you would most likely focus on driving store visits or in store sales next you would focus on building brand awareness and third you could focus on driving engagement with your audience once you selected your campaign objective the next level is the ad set level where you will then choose the audience you want to target so just to do a recap of facebook targeting we've done this in detail in module 4 earlier when we talked about all these targeting options and went through them in absolute detail to do a quick recap so you can use core audiences where you can reach out to your audience based on their location age gender languages demographics interests and behaviors this is based on facebook's own data and data from its data partners 
you could even reach out to people within a certain radius of your offline location. Custom audiences are where you will upload a database of your existing customers and prospects. So people who walk into your store or a restaurant, you would generally have a database of their email IDs, a database of their phone numbers. You would upload this to Facebook and then Facebook would build a custom audience of these people whom you can remarket to on Facebook later. If you have an app which people who walk into your store can use or which you built to drive engagement with your existing customers or prospects, you can even build a custom audience of people who've used your app or visited your website if you have one. Then you have lookalike audiences, which are audiences that are similar to your existing audiences. So this will help you expand your reach and reach a lot more people who are relevant to your business and who would most likely walk into your store and make purchases as well. So in case of core audiences, like we discussed, Facebook has a lot of data about its users. Facebook knows its users' interests, behaviors, demographics. So it combines its own data, which it collects, along with offline data that it collects from its data partners, like Axiom, Epsilon, and then packages all this data in an effective manner for marketers and advertisers like us to use and reach out to our audiences effectively. So you can pick from relevant interests that your audience would have. You can pick from their location. Like we discussed, you can target people within a certain radius of your offline store. You can target specific demographics who are most likely to walk in. You can target people based on their behaviors, both online. So for example, people who use a certain mobile device or even offline based on Facebook's partner data. You can also target them based on their interests that they have shown in various topics and categories on Facebook. Based on this, you can then create audience segments you want to target. For example, you can target someone who's interested in gaming, lives in Delhi, just got engaged, who uses an Android phone and is a premium brand buyer as well. Right? So all these segments are a combination of online and offline data that Facebook has about its users. And as an offline business, you could use this data and this targeting very effectively to ensure your reaching out to your audience with as much precision as possible. So like we just discussed, a quick recap of the targeting options again. You can target your audience based on demographics, based on their interests. Right? It could be interest in fitness. Let's say you run a gym and you want people to walk into your gym, then you could target people who are interested in fitness and wellness, right? probably even in weight loss. You could target people based on their behaviors. So let's say you are selling premium products offline. Let's say you're a designer wear store. You could target people who travel frequently. You could target people on premium devices. You could target by location, so you could mark your store location and target people around it. You could also target people who have shown interest in your page or your event or if you have an app, then your app as well. 
right? So each of these options can be used to effectively reach out to the audience for your offline business. Once you've built your core audience targeting and you're reaching out to them, and you also updated your custom audience segments onto Facebook, you can then further expand your reach using lookalike audiences, which as we've discussed earlier as well. These are audiences that are similar to your existing audiences. So your custom audiences are people you know, people who walked into your store in the past. If you have a website, then your website visitors. If you have an app, then your app users. Fans of your Facebook page, people who engage with you on Facebook. Facebook will then analyze each of these segments, find out what their common demographics, interests, behaviors, and characteristics are, and automatically expand your audience to more such similar people. How do you create these lookalike audiences? Again, this is something that we've seen in quite detail in module four when we talked about Facebook audience targeting. So in your ads manager, you can click on create new, choose lookalike audience. Then you could choose the source custom audience, which you want Facebook to analyze and find a similar audience. You would input your country that you want to build a similar audience in. You would then choose your audience size based on how accurate you want it to be. 1% being the closest match and 10% being the least closest match. So if you want a very targeted audience that is extremely similar to your custom audience, then you would choose 1%. If you're okay with a broader audience because you want to run more of an awareness campaign and the close match is not as important to you, then you might want to try a larger percentage. Right? So that's how you use core custom and lookalike audience targeting to reach out to relevant people who could potentially walk into your store and make a purchase. So basically prospects, existing customers and people similar to existing customers and prospects. Now that we've defined our audience and seen how we can reach out to them effectively, let's look at what kind of placements we can use for our ads. So in the placement section, you can either choose automatic placements or you can choose specifically where you want your ad to show. Automatic placements generally tend to work well as we've discussed in an earlier module as well. As Facebook here will automatically show your ads in places where they are likely to perform best. So you're leaving it to Facebook in this case to automatically optimize and show your ads in the best placements. However, if you want to be specific, then you can choose edit placements and you can check exactly where you want your ad to show. So if you want it only in the Facebook newsfeed or right column, or if you want to include Instagram and the audience network, you can then make those changes here. Once you've chosen your placement, then you would move on to budget and schedule. Just as we've discussed in earlier module, you can choose either a daily budget or a lifetime budget. You will give the start date and the end date for your campaign. You would choose the default optimization for ad delivery, which in this case for a brand awareness campaign objective would be brand awareness. So this will help Facebook optimize to ensure that you get the highest level of brand awareness possible. You could then 
schedule your ads to run only at certain times. A reminder again that ad scheduling works only on a lifetime budget. It does not work on a daily budget. So if you choose daily budget, you will not be able to schedule your ads for a certain time. You can schedule them to run up to a certain date. But if you want them to run only at specific times, that is only possible on the lifetime budget. So you would ensure that you maximize your budget since again, we discussed that a lot of offline businesses work on tight budgets. So what you would do is you would set up a schedule to ensure you maximize your budget and run ads only when your store is open. You would also ensure that your Facebook page clearly has your working hours listed. When do you open? When do you close? You could also test which time of the day and day of the week gives you the most effective returns on your ads. And once you figure it out, you can then focus more on those times and those days. You could also run ads which are specific to certain times. Let's say you're a restaurant and you're running an offer for lunch. You might want to run it for let's say just an hour before lunchtime running up to lunchtime. So that's when you'd focus on running your ads. So ad scheduling is quite important, especially the times and all the more important for an offline business, given that the store is only open during certain times of the day and some of your offers might also be time sensitive. Next is creatives. So, so far we've looked at the campaign level where we chose objectives that made sense for local businesses. Then at the ad set level, we defined and saw what kind of audience targeting we can use. Then we looked at what placements we can use. We saw how we can set our budgets and schedule. Then we move on to the ad level where we choose our creative copy and ad format, which would help drive the highest footfall in our offline stores, as well as the best in-store purchases. So you could choose from any of these ad formats available. You could choose a carousel ad, a single image ad, or a single video ad. A carousel ad can be used where you want to show variety. Let's say you've got a whole bunch of products that you want to promote. You can use a carousel which allows you up to 10 images in one single carousel ad. So you can showcase 10 different products or 10 different product lines or 10 different product categories which are relevant to a specific audience. You could even show different features of the same product. Let's say you have a product that has a whole bunch of USPs that your audience would find irresistible. Then you would showcase each of those USPs on the carousel cards. So that would help you in connecting with your audience better. So this is a great format to choose in these use cases. You could use single image ads as well when you want to have a strong visual message or let's say you've got a great product image that is very attractive and you want to show it as one single image, then you could use this. If you've got a video, you could use that as well. Not only to showcase your products or services, but also to drive engagement with your audience. So the video will help you build a stronger top of mind recall as well. You could also later on build a custom audience of people who watched your video and you could reach out to them at a later point as well. One more thing you should keep in mind when you're running ads for local businesses is that since you are 
being very hyper local since you are hyper localizing your ads your messaging has to be very very relevant and tailored for each of the different segments you are reaching out to your messaging needs to have a local appeal you can't keep your ads absolutely generic because you're reaching out to people who are around you and as we said it's hyper local you need to ensure that you've got customized messaging for each audience segment we've discussed how important relevant customized messaging for audience segments is in an earlier module that was module 4 when we talked about audience targeting that is all the more important for a local business because these are people who are around you at that point in time so that's a very important point for you to keep in mind when you're running an ad campaign targeting store visits or in store purchases next is measurement so now that we've gone through the entire campaign creation process right from objectives to audience targeting to placements budget schedule and ad formats once we launch our ads and they start running we will then need to look at what's working and how we can optimize and improve it so in order to understand what's working we need to monitor relevant metrics which in this case you would look at what kind of reach are you getting for your campaign how many people is your ad campaign reaching out to what is the cost per thousand impressions as a cpm how much is it costing you to reach these people you could also to make the measurement more effective have a special unique discount code that is there only on your facebook ads to help you track the effectiveness of the store visits campaign so let's say you're running an ad and you've decided to give a 10% discount on in store purchases you would give a unique discount code that is only running on facebook ads nowhere else so if somebody walks into your store and brings this code you know for a fact that these people have walked in after seeing your facebook ad so it helps you tie the performance of your campaign and measure it in terms of actual walk-ins and in-store purchases apart from this which is monitoring the reach impressions and the cost of reaching out to the people and having special discount codes to directly measure how many walk-ins were generated from the ads you could also click on the view charts link that you have here and you can monitor the campaign performance in a lot more detail you could look at a graphical representation of the kind of impressions you are getting and what is the cost of reaching out to those people you could also get an idea of demographics how many of the people you reached are men how many are women what age group of people have you reached do they match the kind of people you actually want to reach out to and by placement you can see which placements of yours are getting you what kind of results in terms of reach impressions and the cost of reaching out to people you can also use something called offline events to track offline purchases from your ads so apart from one which we mentioned was giving a unique code in your facebook ad you can use something called offline events so in your ads manager when you click on the menu button here in the top left corner it opens up the whole menu and under the assets column here you have something called offline events over here you can 
create something called an offline event set, which is very similar to uploading your custom audiences where you upload user databases. In this case, after you're running a Facebook ad campaign, you would have a list of all the people who walked into your store and made a purchase with their email IDs or their mobile numbers or both. You would then upload this list of all your customers who have made a purchase after your ad ran. You would upload this list to Facebook. What Facebook would then do is check how many of those people who made a purchase have viewed your ads. So you will then know that there are so many people or an X number of people who viewed your Facebook ads and then walked into your store. So you would know that your Facebook ad campaign is having an impact on your offline store visits. So these are different ways you can measure the effectiveness of the campaigns that are running for store walk-ins and in-store purchases. So now that we've looked at the whole process from start to finish and how do you create effective campaigns for local businesses. Let's do a quick review. So we've looked at how Facebook can be very effective in driving store visits and sales for offline businesses. We've looked at how Facebook helps you with hyper-local targeting and different ways to reach out to your audience effectively. We've then gone through the entire campaign creation process for creating an effective campaign for your local business. We've started from the campaign level where we've chosen or we've looked at different objectives that we could choose. We've seen different audiences that we could target. We've looked at different placement options. We've looked at how we can set our budget, why it is extremely important to focus on scheduling. We have looked at the different creative formats we can use, carousel, single image, single video. And then we've looked at the metrics we need to monitor and how do we effectively measure the effectiveness of Facebook ad campaigns when it comes to store walk-ins and in-store purchases, right? So great guys, with that, we come to the end of this module. Hope you had a great time learning. Thank you so much for your time and attention.